Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the SQS or Simple Queue service. And I just want to go over how this works before showing you how to set it up. So as you can see here, we have a producers over here and we have consumers over here. So we have the SQS queue right over here. So the producers produce messages that go into the queue and the consumers consume those messages. Okay, so I just want to go over some of the other details here. So there's messages that go into the queue. Now the consumers, they pull the queue to, um, to receive those messages. Now, every time the consumers pull the queue, you have to pay AWS for that. So this, there's this idea of long polling where a consumer can pull the queue and if it doesn't find a message, you could still sit there uh, for about up to 20 seconds and still receive a message instantaneously if it comes into the queue. And that'll actually save you money because you're not continuously polling for messages and getting nothing. Okay, that's one thing. Um, the other thing is this visibility timeout. So when a consumer is processing a message, there's this idea that um, other consumers will not see that message because we don't want the same message processed twice by um, by other consumers. So, so when a consumer is processing that message, we can uh, create this visibility timeout. So we can set it, I'll show you how to set it in the, in the UI. Um, so we don't want to set it too high because if we set it too high and then there's a problem consuming that message, then there's going to be a delay, a long delay before other consumers can see that message. And we don't want to set it too low because if it's too low and there's not enough time for the consumer to process it, then that message will become visible and other consumers will start processing that message, which we don't want. So we can set this visibility timeout as well. And then finally, there's this DLQ or the dead letter queue, which I'm going to show you as well. And that's if a message, um, there's a certain amount of times that a message can, you can try to process a message. And if it, you, you don't process it after a certain amount of time, then it automatically goes to the dead letter queue where you can then examine it and later and, and, and run some analysis and see why that message um, wasn't processed. But it's essentially goes off the main queue and to the secondary de dead letter queue. Okay, and we will now show a demo of how this works. Okay, so I am I am in my um, SQS dashboard, and you can always get there just by typing SQS here. So simple queue service. You can now um, see this here, and you can create a new queue like this. And what you can see is you can create a standard queue or a FIFO queue. This is the other thing I want to go over. So in a standard queue, um, you are not guaranteed that the order that the messages were um, produced by the producers are going to be consumed by the consumers. So the order, it's mostly in order, but it's not guaranteed to be in order. And you can also do this FIFO queue, which I'll do later, um, where you can you know, the messages are guaranteed to be in order, to be consumed in order in the way that they were produced. So we'll do a standard queue for now. We're going to configure the queue. So this is what I was talking about before, the visibility timeout. So this is when, um, when the consumer um, receives the message that it's going to be invisible to other consumers. So we don't, because we don't want the same message processed twice. So as you could see, you could set it between zero and 12 hours and the default is 30 seconds. Um, this retention period is how long the message is going to stay in the queue, because if it, if it's not processed after a certain amount of time, it's going to then be removed from the queue. You can see it set the maximum message size. So that's between one and 256 kilobytes. Now this delivery delay, this, you can actually put in a delay from the time that the message is produced to the time that it shows up in the queue. So you can have a delay. By default, there's no delay. You can have up to a 15 minute delay. And this is the, um, this is the long polling. Uh, so this is, this is what I was talking about before where you can, um, when you're processing a message and no messages show up, you don't want to then go back and then poll again after a very short time and poll again after a very short time. So you can set this up to 20 seconds. So it'll sit there. And if any, if a message gets delivered within 20 seconds, the consumer will automatically 
um, pick it up. So if we go back to here, this long polling, so if it polls and there's no message, but it's going to sit there for 20 seconds, and within that 20 seconds, a message comes in, it's going to pick it up right away without having to do another poll. And this is going to save you, um, this is going to save on cost because you're not paying for every time um, for all, for because you're, because you are paying every time you poll. So this way, you just sit there in one poll and get the message right away if it comes in within 20 seconds. Okay, and then this dead letter queue. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to set this up as a dead letter queue first. So we're going to say uh, test DLQ Isha, and then um, we're going to say so this will be the dead letter queue that the other queue will go into, and that's where we'll set this read drive policy. You can also do uh, server-side encryption using um, KMS. You don't have to, but you can do it here. Um, and we can just turn that off. So we'll just create the queue. So there we go. So it's creating the queue now. This is the dead letter queue. Okay, now we're going to create the main queue. So we're going to create the, so it's a standard name. So we'll say, um, let's just say like this. And we'll say it's a standard queue. We're going to configure it. So again, we're going to leave the, the time at 30 seconds. This we're going to leave the same. This we're going to set to 20 seconds. Okay, this is for the long polling. And this is where we could set the dead letter queue settings. So this use redrive policy. And then the dead letter queue. So if you see here, see how it shows up right there? So DLQ and so this part here, the maximum number of times a message can be received before it's sent to the dead letter queue. So we're saying if it's processed a certain, like let's say three times and it's not removed from the queue, it's automatically gonna go into the dead letter queue and I'll show you in the demo. So we'll just say three times. And again, we'll set the service side encryption um, without it right now and we'll create this queue. So now we have the main queue and we have the dead letter queue. So what we can do is we can actually send some messages to see how this works. So let's do here and we could say send message. And in our message body, we could say test message one. And you could actually give it some attributes here too, like name message one just like that. And again, these could be anything you want. Um, and let's just send the message. And here it gives you the message ID. It actually gives you an MD5 hash of the message and of the attributes. And it says it may take up to 60 seconds for it to be available. So let's do another message. I'm gonna send a few, so let's do message two. And, and then we'll send another message, three. And then we'll send four. I'm going to send just, I'll do five messages. Five. There, let's close that. Okay, there, you see here it says messages available five. Okay, so now we can try processing this um, queue and we can look at the messages. So if we go to uh, here, view delete messages, and it gives you this um, warning here where um, view messages currently available by clicking start polling. So we can actually start the polling process. Obviously, if in your in your program you would do this, you know, through the API, but just through the UI we can do this as well. So we can start polling. Um, so messages displayed on the console will not be available to other applications until the console stops polling. And remember, we set it for 20 seconds. So that's why it's gonna it's gonna poll. You'll see here for 20 seconds, and. Um, it'll stop polling as soon as the number of seconds have elapsed, which we said is 20 seconds. And we can also delete the message. So we can say start polling. So it's going to do that right now. So there we go. So we have our um, five messages. Now you see this this progress bar here. This is the 20 seconds. So now it's being elapsed. So while we're while we're looking at these messages, no other consumers, if they're polling, they're not going to see these messages. Okay. So we can. Let's say we can look at this message and we could say um, we can process it 
here more details and we could say okay we could look at it let's say obviously our program would be doing this and we could say delete one message so let's say we processed yes delete the check so we've processed the first message okay now we'll do that now you can see here there's four messages available now because we processed one if we go back and do it again and we don't need to see that anymore so we could say start polling so now we could see how there's other messages as you could see see how the order is not necessarily it's not in the right order it's five two three four and you could see how many times it's been received so you can actually like let's process let's say message number two and we'll say we'll close it and we'll say okay and we processed it and now we can delete it from the queue okay now i just want to show you that as you keep polling these messages and it's going to eventually go into the dead letter queue so start polling Okay, so we only see we only see the fifth message because the received count is three. But if you look at the other ones, the other where did the other messages go for um, three and four? Well, they went to the dead letter queue. If we refresh this, you see here the dead letter queue now has these two messages because we we looked at them three times and they didn't get processed, so they got moved actually we can poll here so you see how we're polling we're polling on the dead letter queue and we could see three and four they've already been received four times and nothing you know that's why they went to the dead letter queue whereas this one has message uh, i think it was message three let's just look now it has nothing because we've polled those messages three times so if i refresh this all three messages will be in the dead letter queue Okay, let's try this. Start polling. Okay, see there's no messages in the main queue. It's still displaying one. It, it's a bit of a delay. But if we go to our dead letter queue, we should see three messages there. If we start polling, and there it is, three, four, five. So you see how these ones have been already polled five times. This one's been polled four times. And again, once they're in the dead letter queue, they're going you could still pull them and you know there's no limit now but they're going to be removed after three days so the next thing i wanted to show you was the fifo queue or the first in first out queue and what we're going to do is we're going to create the dead letter queue for that because you can't use this one because this is not a fifo queue so it won't allow you to select that as a dead letter queue so we'll first create the dead letter queue for fifo and what we'll do is we'll create this as a fifo queue and what you'll see is you have to you have to make the the name dot fifo you have to end it in dot fifo so i'll say test it even tells you here see dot fifo suffix so test um, fifo dlq and it has to be dot fifo um, suffix and that way that's the only way it's going to accept it so we'll configure the queue so we'll leave the rest the same. The visibility timeout is going to be the same. The retention is four days. Now, the this is the long polling. We're going to leave that as 20 seconds. That's the maximum. And then this is the new part, content-based duplication. This is going to um, allow us to deduplicate any messages that are the same, um, which I'm going to show you. It's a, it's, a, it's a good feature here. So that way you don't, you're, you're guaranteeing that there's going to be every message is unique. So the same, the, the same message is not sent to the queue more than once. I'm going to check that there. So this will be the DLQ. So I'm not going to put the redrive policy here. And I'm going to create the queue. So I have my queue now. And this content-based duplication is enabled. Okay, And it's only available for FIFO queues. And now I'm going to create the main queue, the main FIFO queue. So I'll do that. And I'll say test fifo and then dot fifo like that okay so now we're going to create the main queue we're going to configure it and we're going to set the long polling to 20 seconds uh, we're going to 
do content-based deduplication, that's going to be selected. And then this is where we're going to select the redrive policy. So this is where now we could see our queue, our DLQ right here. And this is saying again, how many times are we going to try and process the message before it goes to the dead letter queue? So we're going to say three times and we're going to leave the, um, the encryption off for now. And we're going to create the queue. Okay, so now we have our main FIFO queue and our DLQ for FIFO. And so what we'll do now is we'll add some messages to the, uh, to the FIFO queue. So we'll do, we'll go here, we're going to send a message, we're going to say test FIFO1 and Again, you can add names and like values, so you can have um, name name value attributes. But we're just going to do it here, and I want to show you how the deduplication works as well. So we'll we'll say um, send, and actually here, this is the other part. You have to do a group ID, so this could be anything. And then send another message. So this is what I want to, I'm going to send the exact same message. See here, and I'm sending actually the same, so this is now the third time sending the same message. And now I'm going to change it to two. And now three. Okay, so let's close that. Now, you see how here it's only showing one message. Why is that? Because even though I've sent like five messages, because start polling. So what happened was the uh, the message ID was the same. So what I'm going to I'll show you that now. So if I send this message group ID and the message deduplication ID was the same. So let's do now test FIFO2 and this is 2 and this is 2. Now it's going to send the same, now it's going to be a different message. So let's do 3, 3, 3 and now if I do actually four, but keep the message group ID the same and the message deduplication ID the same, see the token used for deduplication of messages within the deduplication interval. And then this is the um, messages, messages that belong to the same message group are guaranteed to be processed in a FIFO manner. So we can group messages here. So let's send this even though I'm using the same group ID and deduplication ID, it has a different message, but because I'm using the same, this should be deduplicated. So let's close that. And now you see here, it's only showing three messages. And if we start polling, so there it is. We have one, two, and three, but that last message wasn't was deduplicated because it had the same group ID and uh, message ID. And now what we can do is we can we can process the messages. Again, you can process them in any order. So let's say we press it, process the first one and we delete it. Okay, so now we have two and three. Now, if we process if we poll for the messages again, start polling. So now it's saying it's already been received three times. So now, if it's it's if we don't process them now, they're going to go to the dead letter queue. So let's refresh this. Let's view delete messages. There. So now there's there's no messages here because they went to the dead letter queue. And if we go into the dead letter queue, if I refresh that, there now it's showing us two messages in the dead letter queue. And if we open up the dead letter queue and start polling, now we see those messages right here. Okay, 
And that's it. That's how the FIFO queue works.